In this lesson, we're going to talk about a type of metal called transitional metals. So transitional metals, okay, are easy to remember because they're transitioning from metals into nonmetals. Now we know as we go across, the atoms get smaller, and the smaller guys are your nonmetals. So transitional metals are the elements that are between the most reactive. Now the most reactive are the uh, elements, okay, or the metals here on the left-hand side that are the most reactive because they have the greatest ability to lose electrons. So these metals here, here's the alkali metals, all with one valence electron, and the alkaline earth metals. These guys are very reactive in nature. Transitional metals don't have the same reactivity, so they're not quite as big. So as you go across, you get smaller, and these elements kind of maintain their size somewhat, and the answers to why they do and do not follow the trend exactly is something for another course, but you should know that the elements in this middle group here represent the transitional elements or the metals. Now people will talk about uh, in group 12 and group 3 that these aren't transitional, but generally speaking this, this group here. Now to be a transitional metal you're supposed to have an unfilled this block of electrons called D block and of course scandium or this group right here loses all three so generally speaking for the course that we're talking about regions chemistry this middle block has you a transitional metals and what makes them special or different from these alkali alkaline earth is they're not as reactive therefore they are found in nature as uh, elements that we know about iron and copper and nickel and gold and platinum they can be found in their pure form okay not always and there's always some ores to clean up and, and purify but you don't find these guys ever in their pure form because they're just too reactive so what's so special about transitional elements well they're not as reactive and they have the same properties that we expect metals to have we don't think of metals other than we think about the hard metals being shiny having luster conducting electricity conducting heat they all do that, but what makes them stand out among others? Well, if we go to the periodic table, okay, an actual periodic table at some point, and this is the one that we use in class, we will see that my transitional metals, okay, have multiple oxidation states. They have multiple charges they like to become. Again, for reasons beyond the scope of this course, we're not going to talk about the why here. And the Y is basically their play with um, orbitals and electrons between the S and the D. Not part of this course, but again, for another discussion for another course. But what you need to know is they have multiple oxidation states. That's the first thing. Okay, yes, they still have luster and shine. Yes, they're very dense. Yes, they are uh, conduct heat and electricity because they have mobile electrons. Okay, but the other special thing you have to be aware of is that these elements make something called complex ions. Again, what you need to understand about complex ions, they make colored solutions. Love to talk about why, again it's for another course. But these elements, when they are ions, and they are dissolved in an aqueous solution, have color. And that's what you have to get from today. Transitional elements have multiple oxidation states. They have the same properties as metals that we've talked about already. But beyond the multiple oxidation states, they form colored solutions. Our blood is red because of the iron that is in uh, the ligand part of our red blood cell. Okay, Copper is famously greenish blue. Okay. Uh, manganese has that purple color when it's in the plus seven mode. All right. There's so many different other examples I'd love to show you, and I'm going to. So look at these colored solutions. What makes this nickel chloride have color is this what? The nickel. Right? It's a what? Transitional element, Ni. Look at KMnO4. K is an alkali metal, but it's the manganese that makes it purple. purple. Nitrogen, hydrogen, chromium gives it this orange color, and it looks red, and this copper, bluish green, and the, this iron chloride dissolved in water gives these colors. So these colored solutions are due to the ability of these solutions to absorb wavelengths of light, certain wavelengths, and giving back out or retransmitting the light that they're not using, and that's due to electrons 
in their d orbitals, but again, you don't have to know that. Just be able to know if I'm looking for color, I'm looking for a nickel, a manganese, a chromium of copper, iron. And where can I find them? Periodic table. The iron, the nickel, the copper, the chromanese, chromium, the manganese. These are all examples of the solutions you just saw. And when they dissolve in water as an ion, they form colored solutions because they're part of this area of the periodic table, which is where the transitional elements are. So if you're looking for a colored solution, you're looking for an element in this area. Hope that helps.